Welcome to Mucon's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to tell you about this AMD 4700S SBC, or in particular, I will try to find some valid use case for this device. This particular unit was sent to me by wstore.sk, and if you're interested to buy this one at a good price, or maybe some other AMD hardware, then feel free to check out their website. Link will be in the video description, but I cannot guarantee how much stock they still have, and if it's still available uh, to purchase. So, AMD 4700S SVC is basically a defective PS5 die without onboard GPU. Tom's Hardware has a very detailed article about this SBC with also gaming and the synthetic benchmarks, so if you're interested, please follow the link in the video description and study the subject yourself. I will just shortly mention that the performance of this CPU is somewhere between uh, Ryzen 7 1700 and Ryzen 7 2700. The memory subsystem here is pretty interesting. Instead of the standard DDR memory, we have GDDR6 memory. This particular board has 16 gigabytes, but there are also options with 8 gigabytes. And this is not good, because with GDR6 we have a pretty good read-write performance, which is better than many x99 systems with quad-channel memory configuration, but at the same time the memory latency is just atrocious. In my case, testing with ADA64, I have got more than 140 nanoseconds memory latency. In comparison, even with a slow ECC register DDR4 memory on X99 platform, we are getting somewhere between 65 and 85 nanosecond latency. Still, the latency is not the biggest problem of AMD 4700S. The biggest problem is the connectivity. The PCI Express X16 slot that you can see on the motherboard is actually PCI Express 2.0 X4, and this is not enough even for the slow graphics cards. According to Tom's hardware testing with RTX 3090, this 4700S is only able to render 66 FPS, while even the old Ryzen 7 1800X is able to deliver 99 FPS. So, in this video I'm not even going to test games or try to pretend that it is somehow playable. Instead, I will try to find another use case, and my hope lies in the USB ports. A part of the pathetic PCI Express X16 slot, this 4700SBC has two SATA ports and eight USB ports. Out of these eight USB ports, we have four standard USB 2 ports, and then we have one USB 3 5 gigabits per second and three USB 3 10 gigabit per second ports. So my hope is that I can install 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapters into the USB port and PCI Express X16 slot can be used for a SATA adapter. And for this purpose I bought this 2.5 gigabit Ethernet USB adapter from AliExpress and also from AliExpress this USB to M.2 NVMe adapter so I can try to push those 10 gigabit per second USB ports to their limits. But first, let's start from the beginning, and that is the BIOS. My particular 4700S arrived with very old BIOS, and that BIOS doesn't even support Windows 11. You can download latest BIOS as well as drivers from the official AMD website. Find this BIOS and the drivers is not that simple, because it is not located in the CPU section. Instead, it is located in the desktop kit sections. There you can find 4700S and obtain latest BIOS as well as latest drivers. Even though the drivers are only for Windows 10, they work just fine for Windows 11, and the BIOS can be updated from a Windows using a full application. When attempting to update the BIOS, a full application will give you a warning that this BIOS is strongly not recommended for this motherboard, but it's not a problem. It is because the old BIOS is very different from the new BIOS, and the AFU application thinks that they are not compatible. Just press the E button and the update will go through, reboot, and now you have the latest BIOS version, which works just fine with Windows 11. Sadly though, the latest BIOS does not mean a good BIOS. This BIOS is still very limited, we have absolutely no CPU adjustment settings, we have absolutely no RAM tuning, we also do not have resizable bar, also the smartphone function works with the 4-pin PWM fans only, the 3-pin fans work at 100% speed. 
Since I'm talking about the fan, let me mention the cooling of this 4700S. The default fan is pretty noisy, but it gets the job done. It is possible to replace the fan with a Noctua or other alternative. It is also possible to 3D print an adapter and install 120mm fans. That will make your system to be quieter, but unfortunately the cooling performance is not that much better. Even after I repasted my 4700S because the original thermal paste dried out, I still hit 95 degrees Celsius under full load. That's because the cooler is a simple aluminum piece that is not good enough to dissipate heat from the CPU. Replacing this aluminum heat sink is unfortunately not possible because it uses custom mounting mechanism and it also requires a metal back plate on the other side of the motherboard to cool the GDDR6 memory chips. Nevertheless, all of these issues or shortcomings of this 4700S could be forgiven if and only if we could use it as a small home server or a NAS. Testing this USB 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet adapter, I have got the desired speed of almost 2.5 Gigabit per second, which is pretty good, but this is not the maximum speed of the USB ports. For that reason, I wanted to use this uh, USB to M.2 adapter with fast SSD drives. Unfortunately, this USB adapter is a complete garbage. I tested it with my main rig, where I have branded MSI motherboard with a 10850K i9 CPU, and it didn't work. With AMD 4700S, it worked only in one USB port, and that's the 5 gigabit per second port. And even when it worked, the speed was about one fifth of the USB's maximum theoretical speed. And this is definitely a problem of the AliExpress USB adapter and not a problem of 4700S USB ports, because I have also tested my Samsung T5 external SSD, and with any of the USB 3 ports, I get the maximum speed of this SSD drive. Nevertheless, all my hopes in 4700S vanished when this device refused to boot without a GPU. So my hopes to build some sort of a NAS did not come to reality, because the PCI Express X16 slot, this pathetic one, must be used with a GPU. There is no space to install a SATA adapter, and we have only two SATA ports on board. Additionally, 4700S is very power inefficient. At idling, it consumes almost 75 watts of electricity, which is very bad and especially bad for a home server or a NAS, which is supposed to consume as little as possible power because most of the time it will be idling. In the BIOS, I found some CPU power stage settings, something like CPU C state. But even if I use the slowest one, when the CPU performs like a turtle, the idle power consumption is still the same, somewhere around 70-75 watts. It's pretty sad, but I was not able to find a valid use case for this AMD 4700S. The connectivity is way too limited, the power efficiency is not good enough, and the performance is also kinda bad. Still, it might be a very interesting collector's piece, and of course you can use it as a regular desktop or office PC if it can be found for cheap. You get a mini ITX motherboard with an 8-core CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, CPU cooler included as well. You're limited to SATA SSD drives, but that's okay for a regular office or desktop PC. Maybe some of you will be able to find some workloads where the high memory read-write speed will benefit, but in my case I don't have such. So, all in all, if it is available for cheap and you actually need an office PC or something like that in mini ITX form factor, sure, you can buy it. Or maybe you want to buy it and hang it on your wall as a decoration, then yeah, it's also interesting. In other cases, I believe there are better solutions. And with this, I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and useful. Bye for now.